Now at six, a new poll showing how incumbent Governor Andy Bashir stacks against the crowded field of GOP contenders. Plus, one of the candidates hoping to secure the Republican nomination now speaking out after a controversial ad. And six months after historic flooding, an update on, out of eastern Kentucky on rebuilding and people still living in a travel trailer. I'm Chief Meteorologist T.J. Shuck. Of course, it's been a cloudy, gloomy Thursday out there, chilly with a few scattered snow showers. Good news is temperatures are going to moderate nicely, especially heading into the final weekend of January. More on that in your seven day coming up. ABC 36 News at 6 starts now. Good evening, America Bivens. And I'm Paxton Boyd. Thanks for joining us. We're looking ahead at the 2023 Kentucky governor's race as a crowded field of Republicans try to unseat incumbent Democratic Governor Andy Bashir. A recently released poll showing who would have the edge if that election were to happen today. In tonight's top story at 6, ABC 36's Justin Walker joins us live from Frankfurt to break it all down. Justin. The poll by Mason Dixon polling shows that if the election were to happen today, Kentuckians would choose Attorney General Daniel Cameron in the GOP primary race. But it's incumbent Democratic Governor Andy Bashir who leads all candidates in the race for governor. A new poll from Mason Dixon Polling and Strategy shows Attorney General Daniel Cameron leading in the Republican primary with 39% of likely GOP primary voters. Former UN Ambassador Kelly Kraft running in second with 13%. The next highest are Ag Commissioner Ryan Quarles and State Auditor Mike Harmon. 28% remain undecided. But against Andy Bashir. There's a hill to climb, says political analyst Trey Watson. Any Republican who believes this race is going to be easy to beat Andy Bashir, I think this poll is a, is a wake up call for him. According to the poll, voters choose Bashir over all Republican challengers. To break it down, if the election happened today, Bashir beats Cameron by nine percentage points. Bashir also has double digit leads against all other GOP candidates. It's clearly got strength. What I will say is he also uh, hasn't been hit. He's on riding on top of the water. It's just been, a, been a lot of sunny days for him, uh, picking up speed, but there's clouds ahead. Watson says while the poll is a good beginning marker, the candidates have to focus on getting out of the primary before looking too far ahead. Meantime, Kelly Kraft is responding to ABC 36 about controversy over a campaign ad talking about her family's experience with the opioid crisis. Many who saw the ad presumed it meant one of Kraft's loved ones had died as a result of addiction. Kraft's campaign issued a statement to ABC 36 saying in part, quote, Kelly's close family member battled addiction and went to rehab. By the grace of God, that family member was able to overcome the addiction and move on with her life. It goes on to say, it's insensitive and malicious to think an empty chair implies only death and shows that those implying such don't understand the pain caused by the drug epidemic. Asked about the ad, Watson says voters tend to have a short-term memory when it comes to elections. People who have lost a loved one to, to opioid addiction, they may have a different view on it than someone like Kelly Kraft or other people who've had loved ones be addicted to opioids but, but recover. But, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. The primary is set for May 17th in Frankfurt. Justin Walker, ABC 36 News. Well, meantime, Governor Bashir also responding to that poll today. He addressed it during his weekly Team Kentucky update. Well, everybody loves a poll that looks good for them, uh, but I'm just trying to, to be the best governor I can be day to day. Uh, there are 12 candidates vying for the Republican nomination, hoping to face Governor Bashir this November. Chief Meteorologist T.G. Shuck for a look at the, uh, can we look ahead to the weekend? I mean, we're so close. <laughs> yeah, forecast. absolutely. You're, You're trying like to look it. ahead to February I'm, earlier. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, hard spring. to believe. Groundhog Day a day, a uh, week from today. Yeah. Uh, now, 50-50 uh, weekend coming up. We seem to have had uh, several of those through the month of January. First things first, a few isolated snow showers that uh, were relatively heavy. Heavier bursts is expected enough to reduce visibilities, cover roadways briefly.
hopefully, but uh, more folks saw just dry conditions and a few flurries around. That's what we should be dealing with as we go through the evening hours. Biggest issue we're going to have is the chilly air and the wind, which will stay up out of the west at about 10 to 15. Our Bluegrass Pace Care Sky VHC Camera Network, Hicks and Funson Cam, there's your west wind still around 15, 33, but it feels like 24. So with our temperatures settling down into the low and mid 30s on our way to the 20s, you factor that wind in, feel like it's mid 20s tomorrow morning. They could be even into the mid to upper teens for a brief period of time. High pressure is going to be off to the south and there'll be a decent gradient, meaning our winds are still going to be rather strong tomorrow, 15 to 20 miles per hour. So we start in the mid 20s, but because of that southwest wind at about 15 to 20 and probably a mix of clouds and sunshine, we're going to surge all the way into the mid 40s, which is uh, right around average uh, for this time of the year. And then as we head into the weekend, should top the 50 degree mark across the board. That'll be your day to be outside to enjoy it because we've got more rain in the forecast and that active weather pattern sticking around to wrap up the month and kick off February. More on that in your seven day here in just a few minutes. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Office is investigating a shooting that happened at a home on Normandy Lane. Police say a man dropped off a woman at Lake Cumberland Regional Hospital after she had been shot multiple times. She was later taken to UK Hospital. Somerset Police believe the woman was shot at a home on Normandy Lane. Police say they're now searching for Sonny Lee Powell of Somerset. Police say the 48 year old was living with a woman, but their relationship is unknown at this time. Powell is described as a 5 foot 10 white man weighing around 150 pounds with blue eyes and brown hair. He was last seen driving a black 1997 Jeep Cherokee with Kentucky tags and the license plate 979 PYW. If you have any information on his whereabouts, you're asked to contact the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office. In Winchester, a multi-county car chase led to a nearby school being placed on lockdown. Police say the chase ended peacefully in Clark County. The driver, 34-year-old Hannah Prosser, was arrested and taken to a local hospital to undergo a psyche valve. Winchester police say Kentucky State Police and the Clark County Sheriff's Office responded to the area and say the district took measures to secure George Rogers Clark High School out of an abundance of caution, but said there was no immediate threat at the school. Clark County Public Schools issuing a statement this afternoon saying students and staff were safe and unaffected in the lockdown down has since been lifted. Police say Boonesboro Road reopened around 2.30 this afternoon. Now to an update on Eastern Kentucky's historic flooding six months ago this week as those rebuilding efforts continue. Now state leaders say FEMA has now approved a total of $96.9 million. That's a $1.4 million increase from last week. 235 households are still in travel trailers, although that's down eight from last week. State parks are down to 25 people, but remember at one point it was 360. Debris removal is complete and bridge repairs continue. And let me tell you, the folks in the transportation cabinet and the contractors are doing a phenomenal job because we're not just rebuilding. As you look at this, what we are rebuilding in many of these instances, especially this one, would be able to stand up to what we just endured, would be able to handle that one in every 100 or 200 uh, year flood. $4.6 million has been announced in additional safe funds thanks to the nonpartisan special legislative session. You can view the full breakdown by clicking on this story at WTVQ.com. Well, Kentucky is among a handful of states approved to receive federal funding under the American Rescue Plan, connecting thousands of homes and businesses to affordable high-speed Internet. The U.S. Department of the Treasury announcing the approval of broadband projects today. Kentucky is set to receive just under $183 million of that federal funding, which the state estimates will connect around 45,000 households and businesses to high-speed Internet access. Now, this is a lifeline that can improve our lives, our standard of living, and it's as important as any road or bridge that's out there. Now, the program seeks to reach rural areas of the state hardest to serve. Each of the Internet service providers funded by the program will participate in the FCC's Affordable Connectivity Program. Well, coming up, the National Archives now asking for former U.S. leaders to recheck their personal records for any classified documents. Plus, what we're learning about five former Memphis police officers facing charges in the brutal beating death of a Tennessee man. 
Cloudy and breezy conditions hanging around on this Thursday evening. Temperatures set to head toward the 20s into Friday morning, but actually a little moderation in our temperatures. Just in time for the weekend, your seven day forecast on the way after the break.